Hi guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks for watching. I am Chantal and you're watching Furniture Flipping Rush. Today I will show you how I refurbish another coffee table using a different top coat and exciting techniques. If you haven't watched my previous video where I did another coffee table, rush over to this link. I'm happy to say that it's sold on Facebook Market within two weeks. If you want to support this channel, please like, subscribe and ring the notification bell. It really goes a long way for other people to see this content so that they can learn from my experience. Let's look at the table we will be working on today. It's made of Oregon pine and I bought it for 450 Rand, which is $30. The table is covered with epoxy resin and it has a few scratches and dings. So without further ado, let's get started. We start by cleaning the table. I use a dish soap because it's gentle on the wood but effective in removing any oils and dirt that's on it. When I'm done, I use clean water to remove any detergent. The previous top coat that was applied to this table was epoxy resin. It's quite thick, you can't really see it from the video. And I don't want to waste my sandpaper uh, because it will just clog it completely. So I'm first going to be removing it with a paint scraper and a heat gun. So wish me good luck. This is incredible. The heat just makes the resin more flexible so you can scrape it off. Okay, I'm done with the top. It took me about 35 minutes and I'm going to do the sides with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm also using an 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander 
to remove all those scratches. When you use an orbital sander, sand in the direction of the grain. Here I use a 400 grit sandpaper to give the wood a smooth finish. You can use a lower grit number like 220. For this I'm just using what I have on hand at the moment. What you doing here? What you doing? Do I stink? Yes, I know I stink. Thank you very much. I'm going to be doing um, some scuff sanding on the legs and the base to prepare it for the paint. The scuff sanding just helps for the paint to stick to the wood. What are you doing? No, you want to kiss? Sis, not on camera, sis. No, not on camera, go away. <laughs> okay, so it's time to get rid of the dust. I like using my duster and a microfiber cloth just to get rid of the excess dust so that I can go and uh, paint. Just taking a quick break, feeding the birds. There are a few openings around the knots of the wood. So I'm just going to use some wood filler just to uh, close that up and I'll leave it to dry overnight and then I'll work on the top tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday I ran out of light, so today I'm going to sand down my wood filler and get rid of all the dust in this room so that I can start painting the base and the legs with a primer. I'm using masking tape to get clean lines and to prevent paint on unwanted areas.
The first coat of primer I am applying quite thin. It is always better to apply your paint in thin layers. This ensures quicker drying time and a much smoother finish. I'm also taking the time to fasten any loose screws that's holding the base and the legs to the top. So I finished the primer. I did three coats of primer. I didn't include it in the video because it was just the same process. I'm going to start painting the base and the legs with a lovely grey from Durham. I use Durham at the moment because it is cost effective for me. I'm painting over three layers of primer. I painted the other two coats of primer off camera as it was just the same process. At the bottom of the table there is a large opening in the wood. I'm applying more wood filler to conceal any visible cracks. Normally I would not worry much about the bottom of the table, but in this case I just want to increase my chance of getting a good price for this piece and go that extra mile, because the client will see the bottom on collection. I believe that furniture flipping should be more than just applying a coat of paint. After my first coat of paint has dried and waiting for the wood filler to dry, 
I apply my second coat of paint. Okay, so the second coat of paint dried. Uh, before I apply a top coat to the legs and base, I just want to sand down the wood filler I applied to the bottom of the table yesterday and vacuum up the dust because I don't want the dust to get stuck in my top coat. Just to improve the look of the wood filler, I apply a thin layer of top coat to it. I'm applying a water-based sealer to protect the paint on the legs and the base. Removing the tape is always so satisfying. Adding some value with skid protectors is a good idea. Inevitably, you'll get some bleed through. This is easily corrected by using sandpaper to remove it. Because I painted the base and the legs with a grey cool tone, I wanted to keep the top a cool tone as well. If I would use a polyurethane oil based top coat, it will come out yellow, which is a warm tone, and the two colours will clash. So for today's project, 
I wanted to keep this whole table within a cool tone. I'll be using a water-based top coat with no oil in it so that I end up with that overall cool tone that I'm looking for. I don't show this on the video, but I applied four layers of this top coat to get this result. After my top coat, I was not happy with the color of the wood filler around one of the knots. So I scratched the top layer of it out and I mixed together two colors of wood filler, half and half, to create the color that I like. It's still not perfect, but definitely better than what it was. And one last look at the before, before the revealing brush. Thank you for watching. Always keep it flipping good. The table was a proxy, uh, e e uh, epoxy, epoxy, epoxy resin. Hmm. The scuff sanding, hmm. the scuffs there. To get rid of the poly filler, the excess wood filler, wood filler, wood filler. <sighs> Remember the cost of buying and selling furniture. All depends on what area you live in. I live in South Africa, Cape Town.